Yes! Yes! This is it! <laughs> How cool does that look? Hey guys, Aaron Rajamani here again from UA Visuals and today I want to show you how I did the drone hyperlapse sequence in my latest resort video uh, that was filmed at The Edge in Bali. Coming up! So drone hyperlapse, what is it? Hyperlapse has evolved from time-lapse photography. So time-lapse photography is basically taking an image uh, once every two seconds 20, 30 seconds, and all those images are kind of put together and it gives you the illusion that time has lapsed. Time lapse. So hyperlapse is essentially the same thing, but the only thing different about a hyperlapse sequence is the movement of the camera. So the actual camera is either pushing in or tracking, or as we're about to show you, on a drone in the air orbiting around a property. So that's where hyperlapse comes in and it looks epic. Some, there's some awesome videos floating around on YouTube. Some taken at night, um, dusk, dawn, during the day, it just looks awesome. Remember, there's more than one way to do it. You can either set the camera up and let it record a video, 4K video, for example, really slow pace. Uh, at the end of it, put it into a program like uh, Final Cut Pro or Premiere and then speed it up. But I think the best way to get the most quality out of your, your end sequence is to actually take digital stills. Now the reason for that is if you're filming at 4K, one frame of a 4K video is only equivalent to about an eight megapixel camera. If you take a digital still from a Phantom 4 Pro or a Mavic, Phantom 4 is about 20 megapixels and I think the Mavics are about 12. You're gonna get more resolution, more data, more information to then be able to color correct and um, get a good dynamic range out of that image taken at RAW rather than a video filmed at 4K. Anyways, so let's look at the workflow. The first one is the actual capture. Number two, we bring that into Lightroom and we start coloring and correcting. Uh, number three, we turn all those images into a video piece or a video sequence. Then number four, we stabilize that and edit. And then at the end, we export out number five. So there's five steps. It does take a bit of patience and a bit of time. It's a lot involved. So grab yourself a wine or a coffee and uh, let's get started. So let's talk about the actual capturing part. First thing you need to remember is you need to take the images in um, manual camera settings. The reason for that is your color and your white balance needs to stay consistent. You also should use the uh, DJI flight intelligent modes. Um, if you're just doing a time-lapse piece where your drone's just stuck in the air in the one spot, use the tripod mode. Very, very handy. Um, if you're orbiting around a particular resort or property, use the POI or the point of interest mode. This basically sets an automatic flight path around the property, you don't have to touch it, you just set and forget, and because you're using the, the software, it is extremely accurate, very smooth, and all you have to do is just set it to a really, really slow rate, or a slow movement. You also need to capture in RAW, so DNG files, get the most out of it. Color profile, try and set it to a relatively flat profile because you're importing it to Lightroom and you can really bring out the colors and contrast and all that kind of stuff then anyway. So D-Log or d cine look, that's kind of, that's my favorite anyway. Okay, so once you've done the capture and you've got a bucket full of images, uh, what you need to do now is take it into Lightroom and you're gonna process the crap out of it. Let's jump into Lightroom and I'll show you how that's done. Um, as you can see, I've already done this before, but I'll take you through the steps anyway, and then hopefully this will help you do your hyperlapse. The first hyperlapse batch that I did, I've got about 282 images. Sounds like a bit of a shock. It's not really. So what I did in my workflow with Lightroom is basically the very start image. Uh, this is actually what it looks like. So this is the beauty about taking images at RAW is that 
you can really bring out the best in the image. Right, so what you need to do is I like to edit the very, very first image. So I won't show you all the kind of color settings and things like that because it's really up to you on how you want to stylize it. Um, but my end result or what I finished up with was a, a sunrise golden -y look, which is this. Once I corrected the first one and I was happy with it, what you need to do is go Command C and you copy the settings. Then what I like to do in a time lapse sequence or a hyperlapse sequence is kind of go somewhere in the middle to where the images may be a little bit different in terms of coloring. Um, so obviously these have been done, but I'd paste the settings in, in the middle here and I'll look at it and go, yeah, cool, that looks, that looks relatively good. Same as the very first one. And then I keep going all the way to the very end and then I control V or command V, paste my settings in and it still looks pretty sweet. So go right back to the start and then what you need to do is you need to apply that change or paste that change to all the images. There is a quick way to do it. You can control all, control all, command A. And if you hit the sync button down the bottom, it will basically apply that setting to all the images and then you're good to go. And then what you need to do is just double check, like maybe go through some of the shots in the middle and just make sure, yep, sweet, that looks good. Colors all good. You may get an image that might be absolutely crap or uh, the shot of the horizon maybe tilted a little bit too much. Um, if that's the case, go into it and you can actually slightly amend um, or, or twist the image so your horizon, horizon is straight. Once you're all good and you're happy with the images that you've just corrected, you're going to select all and you're going to export all these images as JPEGs at full resolution. Export Choose whichever folder you want to go into. Um, quality, crank it to 100. Don't resize to fit, leave that uh, unchecked. Pixel per inch, leave that at 72. And then, boom, export. Once you export this into a folder, create another name for it. Just have a massive bucket full of these images. The reason for that is we're going to go into the next step, which is number three of turning these images into a video sequence. There's a program you can use called Time Lapse Assembler. Um, to my knowledge, it's free still, which is pretty cool. Really basic program, but it does the trick. Uh, this is what it looks like. So basically, you're choosing the source. I oh, don't no, JPEGs. Like that. You hit open. And then you choose what frame rate you want those images to be. So if your base frame rate on your editing program is 24 frames per second or 25 or 30, then you add that in here. Dimensions, you've got other settings here where you can scale it proportionately or you can resize it. Keep your quality at max and then you go encode. And that's it. Grab yourself another wine or a coffee and hang back and just wait until it's done. So once you've exported the MOV file, the video file, you'll notice it is quite shaky. It looks cool, but it's very shaky. So then what we're going to do is you're going to take it to the next level of stabilizing, which is importing it to any of these three programs I recommend. So either Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, or DaVinci Resolve. At the moment, my favorite is DaVinci Resolve because the stabilizing that is off the chain. We'll open DaVinci. We'll bring this video into DaVinci and we're going to stabilize it. New project, let's call it our oh, hyperlapse cheat. Let's go create. We let's find this clip. <clears throat> the clips have different frame rate to the current project settings. Uh, I'll just change it for now. That basically means that I assembled it in 30 frames per second and this base is 24 or 25. Um, but just for the sake of this, we'll skip all that. Let's drop the image into our edit. So this is what you've seen. It's pretty much raw, fresh out of time-lapse assembler. A lot of shakiness going on. So after you add that, uh, you're going to get it down into 
this bit here where it kind of looks like a target. It's the tracker part. We're drop down window, hit stabilize. And what it does is it analyzes the, every single frame and does its little magic. And in a couple of minutes, you should get a really, really nice stable footage. All right, so now it's done. And let's see how it looks like. Sick, amazing. Yes, yes, this is it. How cool does that look? You can still see it's shaky, but for a drone sitting in the air 500 feet from the sea with 30 kilometer an hour winds, uh, it's pretty, pretty damn good. That's it. After that, you bring that into your edit and um, you add it to your sequence. Yeah, hope that helps. Give it a go. Let me know how you go as well. Hit subscribe, hit us up. Any questions you have, let me know. Peace. Right, so we'll just wait till this dog stops slurping and drinking. Better stop drinking, you're so loud. You're cramping my style here.